1952, Japanese comics known as anime took off after artist Osamu Tazuka created the iconic character Astro Boy. The popularity of the pint-sized superhero spread globally, eventually being adapted into an animated television series. The story is based in a futuristic world where robots and humans coexist. The head of the Ministry of Science, Dr. Tenma, builds a robot to replace his son who died in a car accident. But Dr. Tenma soon realized that Astro Boy would be unable to fill a human void. <laughs> Unable to raise his robotic son, Dr. Tenma sells Astro Boy off to cruel owners. After realizing he's been endowed with superpowers, Astro Boy begins a new life as the guardian of justice and peace. Having only one wish to become human, Astro Boy battles the forces of evil. Astro Boy, a brave, smart and righteous robot, became everybody's hero. Osamu Tezuka's groundbreaking animated work changed the way people viewed comics. Parents no longer feared that comics would interfere with their children's studies, and instead, they encouraged them to read them. Astro Boy helped Osamu Tezuka win his legendary status in Japanese anime history. Osamu Tezuka has been credited as the father of Japanese anime. Legend has it that his last words were, Give me a pencil. <laughs> Comics blend art with fantasy and a casualness for everyone. Some have called it a fusion art form where painting, philosophy and literature are all combined to create one artwork. Comics have served as an artistic medium to reflect current times through humour and satire. Eye-catching artwork, together with clever writing, has given readers a humorous glimpse into a world which they thought they knew. The exact origins of comics have long been debated. Some scholars argue that comics originated in Europe, where humans have expressed their emotions and desires by painting on cave walls and stone as early as the Neolithic Age.
But cave paintings are a far cry from the modern comics of today. Many academics agree that by the end of the 15th century, the name and form of comics were widely established throughout Europe. Renaissance painter Leonardo da Vinci and William Hogarth, a famous British painter during the Industrial Revolution, both used exaggerated and distorted character figures in their sketches and paintings. Some have argued that Hogarth's series of representative works marked the beginning of modern Western comics. Marriage a la Mode, published in 1745, is a set of comics painted by William Hogarth. Hogarth combined a picture as a whole while establishing the continuity of a story, and he achieved dramatic results. His works laid the foundation for Western realist comics, and they would go on to have a major impact on the development of comic strips later on. Early comics had more irony than humour. The satire often related to current events. This cartoon expressed the indignation of the European liberals through mockery of the politicians who imposed the Carlsbad decrees. It depicts the Austrian Foreign Minister Clemens von Metternich's hurried escape from the country after an uprising in Vienna during the 19th century. This work shows the French finance minister's horse in shock while welcoming the Tsar at Versailles in 1896. This is an anti-Semitic cartoon from the 19th century. From these early French comics, one can see the beginnings of anti-Semitism, making them important historical documents. In particular, the cartoons published at the time became important references for historians in studying social attitudes during this period. In 1898, Le Figaro published Caron d'Arc's Family Dinner, which dealt with the treatment of Jews during the Dreyfus Affair. It shows how cartoons reflected the issues of the era. When talking about Japanese anime, one name cannot be ignored. That name is Toba Sojo, also known as Kakuyu. Toba Sojo was born in 1053 and died in 1140. He's worshipped as the originator of Japanese anime. The Choju Jinbutsu Giga, painted by Toba Sojo, is listed by the Japanese government as one of the four national picture scrolls. The painting illustrates human-like animals, all in graphite lines, smoothly and vividly. The work was comparing a corrupt society to animals in dramatic fashion. The deep influence of this work can be seen in a number of ceramic products produced on the subject of frolicking animals. Later, pictorial scrolls became popular in Japan. Fukutomi Soshi, Hiaki Yagio, and other masterpieces were picture scrolls that became popular in the Muromachi period.
Hayaki Yagiyo depicts a Japanese legend about a ghost. Roku Rokubi is a man who is possessed by a demon, causing his head to float away from his body at night. And the demon is the soul of a bird that will normally possess people who enjoy killing and eating animals. The legend says that after seven days of being possessed, there'll be nothing left of the man except bones. Hashi Himo is a grieving, love-struck woman. She commits suicide by jumping off a bridge after failing to stay with her lover. If a man crosses the bridge, she will drown him in the water. If a woman crosses the bridge, she will be pulled into the water by force. It is said that in Japan, a woman can only commit suicide by jumping into the river. So this demon came to be known as the Tragic Demon. refers to a woman who was insulted, bullied, and ravaged until her death. She turns into a ghost to seek revenge. Because she's only a pile of bones, she disguises herself with human skin. She usually targets males with poor qualities. Yaki Yagio has more detailed records, making it popular among Japanese folk artists who are looking to conduct research. Yuki Ona lives in the mountains. She has a beautiful appearance. She often attracts men entering the snow-capped mountains to a place where no one dares to go. After a kiss, he is frozen solid allowing her to finally take away his soul. Yuki Ono's child, known as the Snow Child, was considered to be the one that brought winter's first snowfall in Japan. In the early Erdo period in the 17th century, painters in Kyoto and Osaka drew some slender Toba Ur paintings. These successfully developed the painting tradition of their time and gave rise to the Ukiyo Ur style. What needs to be emphasized is that Toba Ur was actually named after Toba Sojo. This shows just how much respect the Japanese anime industry had for its beloved originator. In Japan, true anime can be traced back to the Tokugawa period. The prevalence of ukiyo-e was laid on the aesthetic foundation of Japanese painting. Those simple drawings were called manga. Katsushika Hokusai from the Tokugawa era is another great anime artist in the footsteps of Toba Sojo. He is known for his ukiyo -e. Hokusai's most famous print 
36 views of Mount Fuji, was completed about eight years from 1822 to 1830. All depict Mount Fuji in its background. Thirty-six views of Mount Fuji is a representative work using a combination of Western techniques and Japanese tastes. In this series, Hokusai observed nature entirely through his own eyes, from the perspective of a person. Contrasting the majestic image of Mount Fuji with ordinary folk life, the unexpected composition produces an image of rustic tranquility. In this picture, Mount Fuji is in the distance, with huge waves in front. The composition of this work is similar to 17th century Dutch seascapes, either purely by coincidence or because the artist was using it as a reference. Katsushika Hokusai's landscape paintings were welcomed during the Erdo period due to their refreshing style. But his paranoia about the distorted form of reality was beyond the understanding of people back then. It only resonates in modern art. The art of Katsushika Hokusai was ahead of its time, a modern work before the rise of the modern era. In the spring of 1814, the Hokusai manga was published. It was later assembled into a 15-volume painting encyclopedia. Legend has it that Katsushika Hokusai was the first to apply manga into painting. But in fact, famous genre painter Hanabusa Icho mentioned the word manga in one of his books published in 1769. Later, Kitao Masanobu also mentioned manga in the preface to one of his art books. In China, the equivalent term for comics first appeared in the Northern Song, but it had nothing to do with painting. Instead, it referred to a kind of bird, a spoonbill inhabiting areas by the Yellow River. It wasn't until the early Qing period that the term began to become associated with paintings. Jin Long, one of the eight eccentrics of Yangzhou, mentioned the word in one of his works, which means casual painting. Ancient Chinese cartoons were not true cartoons, but they were similar in essence. The works emphasized the concept of using one thing to represent another, but they all had some basis in social activity and they express this theme through concrete images. What the illustrations of the classic Chinese text, Classics of Mountain and Sea, demonstrate is the world of myth in the mind of ancient Chinese. In another work, exaggerated cattle figures reflect a love for the animal and the characters that resemble them. Their great artistic charm often caused pleasant surprises. 
The traditional Chinese New Year paintings highlight the artistic characteristics of comics. Some of them express people's desires for wealth by depicting fish and children. The ancient Chinese gate gods were also done in the style of comics. People believe the gate god picture will vanquish ghosts and evil beings, so it's often displayed in many homes. This rare ancient cartoon called Harmony was painted by the Changhua Emperor. This painting depicts three men holding each other together in a ball, but from a distance it looks like just one man. From what the painter wrote on the work, it's obvious that the theme of the painting is achieving harmonious relations. Harmony is imaginative, clever, and interesting in terms of artistic design and composition through its use of a cartoon style approach. In 1924, Feng Zikai published his first comic in a publication sponsored by Zhu Ziqing and Yu Pingbo. It was called Our July. The painting was highly praised by Mr. Zheng Jianduo, editor-in-chief of the Literature Weekly in Shanghai. In the following year, Feng Zikai was invited to paint for the Literature Weekly, and Zhang Jianduo continuously published the paintings under the title of Zikai Comics in his publication. From that time, comics became widely accepted in China. Zikai comics featured novel material, a unique mode of expression, and distinctive frankness and freshness. But the works focused on familiar subjects to make them more accessible to readers. The comics of today developed over hundreds of years, with different countries and regions having their own proud traditions. Comics from their birth are distinguished by being descended from noble art. Whether depicting the ugliness of reality or the beauty of art, their external form has not changed. But they have undergone a qualitative transformation in people's minds. Comics, being a unique category of art, have been loved by people all over the world as a universal form of artistic expression. Familiar images are drawn using an exaggerated style. The outlandish caricatures were a means to vent anger. Join us for part two, a special form of irony.